Psalms 54, verse 4. Behold, the Most High is mine helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. He shall reward evil unto mine enemies. Cut them off in thy truth. I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I will praise thy name, O Lord, Yahweh Shai, for it is good. For he hath delivered me out of all trouble, and mine eye hath seen, seen his desire upon mine enemies. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakwadash, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world ignorantly calls God, Yahweh Shai being the name of his only begotten Son, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David, the elect, the men that are doing his word in sincerity and truth, this work in sincerity and truth, and those uh, fellow believers, those men, women, and children that are part of the elect, uh, those fellow believers out there to you all, I say shalom and greetings. So, uh, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. Um, you know, I have a picture that says all or nothing. Uh, it, it's not specifically about that, but I, it tied right in with uh, what I wanted to go into. I think I'm going to entitle this. Uh, the ability to sacrifice this life, man. All right. Because as we walk through uh, the valley of the shadow of death, uh, Babylon, America, as we dealing with our families, as we're dealing with our enemies, as we're dealing with uh, work, as we're dealing with our livelihoods, as we're dealing with uh, love, as, we, as we're dealing with uh, our women, our children, you know, uh, the ability to sacrifice this life is, uh, it takes a, a, a larger hold on a man, okay? And the thing is, you have to have a certain spirit to be able to do that because, you know, that that's something that should never be taken lightly when it comes to this because everybody that's now finding out that they're Israelites, they're thinking that this is just an easy thing that they can do and, oh, it's no big deal. Oh, yeah, I'm an Israelite, you know? But the Lord is requiring a sacrifice, okay? And I, I read something... Um, uh, well, it was this movie. I'll be watching. A, it's a show called The Last Kingdom, which is a good show on Netflix, by the way. Uh, it shows a lot of uh, those. A lot of those people were really jakes, uh, you know, and they try to show them as their Edomites. But nonetheless, you know, uh, he said, he said, but you have to make a sacrifice. And he said a sacrifice requires blood. All right. Which is and technically true, but also, uh, you know, the definition of sacrifice along roughly paraphrase says something like a sacrifice is something that you're willing to exchange for something else because something whatever you're getting something else is more is more worthy. OK, and that's exactly what it is. We're sacrificing this life to obtain a more worthy life with our Lord and Savior, man. OK, because this life is, is nothing but filth, you know, but I'm going to read uh, Psalms 54 and 6 one more time. It says, I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it, for it is good. You see, so uh, this is um, King David, you know, and he says, uh, I will freely sacrifice. So we the thing is, the Lord is uh, looking for men and women uh, and children that are going to give up this life, man, that are going to change their ways, that are going to come back unto him. Because majority of these people can't. You know, I was talking to somebody earlier and was talking about Jake and uh, the difference is a uh, big difference between Jake and Esau. You know, Esau, it says uh, in Habakkuk, Habakkuk, the second chapter, if I'm not mistaken, about the fourth verse, it says the soul that is within him is not a right. You see, Esau, he, he's just off. His spirit, his flesh, everything about him is off. But Jake, Jake have better spirits. They just succumb to their flesh. They don't let their spirit rule, okay? Whereas uh, people that are the, the elect are going to are going to let their spirit flourish and we're not going to succumb to the ways of our flesh. We're going to follow after the Lord, you know, and uh, so let me get this. This is Psalms 116 and verse 17. It says, uh, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. And see, it's crazy. We didn't have two scriptures about sacrificing uh, to, the, to the Lord, but it all says to the name of the Lord. So that's how you know those sacrifices that you're making, they have to be to the name of the Lord. They have to be in the right direction, man. So if you say, oh, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, even though the Lord winks, winks at our ignorance, so if you don't know the name, you don't know the name. But say, for instance, you got people that have heard the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and they just, they decided to say, Ahaya Ashur Yeshaya, and say, oh, I'm not going to eat, eat pork no more. It's for the Lord. Even though 
it's righteous to come back uh, and not and to not eat pork and to serve the Lord. But hey, you got to do you got the things that you're sacrificing. You got to be willing to give up in the name of the Lord. All right, Lord, I repent from that in the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. And that's how you ultimately repent because those other names will have you falling back into the world. Because the scriptures say the spirit is enmity. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. You know, uh, because when you call on those false gods, it's going to allow uh, different different spirits to abide in you, man. Okay, and they take hold. And so that name is that stronghold, man. It says the name of the Lord is a stronghold and it's a strong tower. Uh, this is Romans 8 and uh, 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. You see that? So the uh, the two thirds, they, they mind the things of the flesh, man. They follow after Esau, Edom, but we mind the things of the spirit. So we're going to follow after the spirit. Okay. It says for they that are after the flesh, Oh, Salakia, next verse. Uh, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against the Most High, for it is not subject to the law of the Most High, neither indeed can be. So they that are in the flesh, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please the Most High. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of the Most High dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Hamashiach, he is none of his. And see, you don't want to be in that, man. Being a none of Yahweh Shai's, man. Okay, that's not the way to go. Okay, when you read on that chapter, it talks about mortifying the deeds of the, of the flesh, man. Okay, because the spirit, the flesh is enmity. The carnal mind is enmity against the most high in the spirit. Okay? So that, that that's the that's not the um the 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 way that we want to come. We don't we want to be counted as one of Yahweh Shah's. We want to be as one of his heir, heirs, his joint heirs. So we got to be, you got to have a certain spirit to be willing to sacrifice this life, man. You got to be willing to, to uh, you know, if you like, if your your job is stopping you from serving the Lord, if your job is like, hey, man, we got to cut that beard off. I'm sorry, it's, we got a new policy. You got to cut that beard off. Hey, give up the job, bro. You know? If your uh if your job is like hey we got to get this this RFID chip so you can continue working here give up the sacrifice that job all right if you're a woman all right she's like no you can't go out on camp day anymore cuz i need you to watch the kids you got to you got to be willing to say, to piss her off you got to be willing to say hey i'm going to camp i'm going to serve the lord all right and if you got a problem with that then you can kick rocks you got to be willing to sacrifice that, man. It's as hard as uh, something like that may be. You might have had a good ass job, pays well, you know. You might have had a good woman, you know, a so called good woman, you know. But you got to be willing to give those things up. And every two third, this is something that a two third spirit is not able to do, man. Okay? A two third spirit is not willing to sacrifice this life. For the life to come because all they think of is their flesh all they think of is now all they think of is seeing with their eyes and not with their spirit if they knew that if they could see with their spirit and see the glorious things that the lord got saved of us when you read romans 8 and 17 that same chapter i was reading it says for our light affliction doesn't compare to the things that the most high has prepared for us man all right this is a light affliction to sacrifice this life man okay this is psalms 141 and 2 it says, um, I start at one. Lord, I cry unto thee. Make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. So even when you're praying to the Lord, you're making that you're making a sacrifice to your how about Shemiah Shai. OK, that those are what we send it up because he says, oh, you know, the angels say in revelations, they say the, those those sweet odors. Those are the prayers of the saints. So those are even sacrifices being lifted. And that's how you know that when um, these when you're praying to false gods, you're that's that you're sacrificing unto them. And that's is not OK with Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, because all sacrifices are supposed to be in righteousness through him. OK, so when you send up a prayer saying in the name of Jesus, OK, you're sending up a uh, let's, let's say it's a. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting of my hands as an evening sacrifice. 
So the Lord, you're not supposed to sacrifice before any idol gods. Okay? So when you're, you, you got up your prayer hands and you're saying in the name of Jesus, that's a sacrifice, man. All right? And you sacrificing a part of your spirit by doing so. So with that, actually, that's a good transition to good, get uh, Romans, might as well. Um, Romans, the 12th chapter. This is Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. So what's something else that you got to sacrifice, man? Men. What are you going to... And this is real talk goes down to men and women. All right. But men, uh, the Lord says, behold, the sheep of my pastor are men. So men, you, there's something that you got to be willing to sacrifice is your body, man. You know, women, too. But in this regard, men coming out to the highways and byways. All right. Women don't come out to the highways and byways. I'll get to that in a second. But men, you're supposed to be willing to come out to the highways and byways. We get it. Every man right now, the Lord, the apostles, through the spirit of the Lord, shut it down to where men aren't going to be. I mean, uh, men can't necessarily join the camp. Hey, but even in this is a time real talk. Let's be 100 percent real. A time like now is even better for men to have that fear of teaching to come out, because now all you have to do is come, listen, take notes, read your Bible. All right. And you still present your body as a living sacrifice, because now you're still putting yourself in front of uh, in front of the uh, congregation at the church. You're letting the Lord know that you're, you're standing for him boldly and that you're not ashamed of the gospel. All right. So you coming out there, you still present your body as a living sacrifice. That takes a special spirit to do that. All right. You got men. A dude got on one of my old videos I did like two or three years ago. You know, got on there today scoffing. He said, see, it's men like you that shouldn't be calling yourself an Israelite because uh, I was, it was like on a fo a phopy, uh video that you shouldn't be calling yourself an Israelite. Um, I forgot what else he said. Some scoffing shit. But then I was like, hey, man, you doing all that talking. But where are your works? Where are your works, man? You got you got on your page is no videos of nothing that you've done to serve the Lord, but you telling somebody that they shouldn't be calling themselves an Israelite or that they're setting a bad example. No, you're setting a bad example. What if we got a young brother, you know, young brother who's 13 years old and he gets on and he's trying to be fed and he goes on your page because you commented on something and sees that you don't have anything to provide. You made no sacrifices for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh And Yahweh Shai made the ultimate sacrifice for you. And you know the, 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 uh, the will of the Lord. All right? But men like you are going to be getting with beaten with many stripes, man. All right? Doing all that talk. Okay? But it says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. All right? It's a reasonable service to go out and serve the Lord, man. But do these people want to serve the Lord? No, they want to they want to serve their own bellies. They want to serve what's right in their eyes. OK, they don't want to give up this life. They don't want to give up uh, their woman. They don't want to give up that house. They don't want to give up that job. OK, and is that shit painful? Man, yes, man. We in hell, man. Let's keep it all the way 100, man. When you when you lose a good job, when you lose a, a, a decent car, when you lose a, a good woman, you know, you, hey, man, this, this shit painful. It can hurt, okay? But the Lord says we got to be chastened, man. He said he gotta, we got to be made uh, fire, uh, uh, as gold tried in the fire in the furnace, man. Hey, you can't become go pure gold until you get rid of all the impurities. So sometimes the Lord got to put us through that trial of fire to see what we made of, to see what we're willing to give up for him, man. Okay? And I say that I told the brothers this last week, man, and it, this hurts too. Sometimes the thing you might love the, Lord, the, the most, the Lord might require it of you, man. All right? And, and sometimes it can be your literal life. You know? You got some guys that love their money too much. Some guys love their literal life. Like, I just love my life. You know what the scripture says? Therefore, I hated life, man. Because everything under the sun is vanity and vexation of spirit. But you got some people that just love life so much. And like old boy in Luke, he said, uh, uh, the man that was storing up his goods, he said, I'm going to stir up my goods and relax with the Lord says on this night, thy soul shall be required of thee. He took his life. Okay. He killed him that night, man. Okay. This is a uh, Proverbs 15 and eight. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight, man. You see that? So you got people that are sacrificing for wicked reasons. You got people that are sacrificing for Jesus Christ and Serapis Christians, Cesare Borgia, 
Allah, Buddha, Krishna. You got people sacrificing for that, but it says they're, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. An abomination is the uh, detestable and the defiled thing, man. He said their sacrifices are ab ab abominable, okay? But the prayer of the upright is, the, is his delight, okay? So that's why we try to serve the Lord, and that's why we want to sacrifice his life. So our prayers and our sacrifices may be pleasing and acceptable in his eyes, man, okay? Um, of course, I got to get Matthew, but I, I, I want to see if this Jonah hits how I want how, how I wanted it to. It was on my spirit to bring it out. So, Lord willing, it'll flow how I wanted to. I had, I think, two verses from it. This is Jonah 1 and uh, 16. It says, Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. And see, this is when they were, Jonah, the sea was getting uh, tempestuous and, you know, roaring and raging. Okay? And so they, Jonah said, Cast me into the sea and then it'll stop. But these men, it says they feared the, it says they feared the Lord exceedingly because of the things that he was doing. They knew, they knew, they said the, the lot was cast upon Jonah, that it had to be his God that was doing this, man. He says, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows, man. All right? Because they that fear, that fear, man, when you got that fear of the Lord, man, you you that's what makes you make your body a living sacrifice. That's what makes you to give up shrimp, crab, uh, and lobster and pork. That's what makes you to stop smoking weed. All right, that fear of the Lord, man. So then when you're, the fear of the Lord comes first. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Okay, so when you have that fear of the Lord and then your knowledge is increased, you're able to make certain sacrifices. You have that ability to sacrifice this life. But if you don't fear the Lord, you're not going to have that ability to sacrifice this life, man. You're going to sway in this life. You're going to be double-minded. You're going to say, hey, yo, you know what? Getting lineups and get, getting all of these women that I want is better. Getting this money, getting this bag is better. All right, because you don't fear the Lord, but that's all right. When you know, I was thinking of uh, earlier, even though the Lord has shown us so much mercy and so much love already, man, just giving of His word alone, all right, is love on its own. But I was thinking, you know, and I, I, I'm saying this, uh, brothers, bear with me because I don't want to sound like I'm going off. But by the Lord, by, by you know, the Lord hasn't shown us His absolute true love yet, man. Okay, he has, you know, and that's what I say. I don't want to sound like I'm going off, y'all. But just, just feel me what I'm saying real quick. The Lord hasn't shown us His absolute pure love. Yahweh Shai has, of course, absolutely, by dying for our sins. But I mean, in, re in the regard of uh, salvation, you know, and He's shown us that it with uh, the Red Sea. But this salvation is going to be a salvation like none else. Okay, because. See, they see they see this life like, oh yeah, you know, the hey, the, the Lord dealing with the pastor. He got a, he got a nice car, he got a nice rims, he got a nice house. His wife looked good. He head of the church, got nice suits on, you know. So that's how they see righteousness. That's how they see the love of the Lord. All right, but the thing is, the Lord ain't really he right now. We we going through hell, so we we gotta deal with the things that's coming to us, man. But when you when they see the ultimate like that pouring out of the Lord, man. When they see that the Lord just blessing his people and his men, they're going to be like, hey, man, and that's that's love, man. Yahweh Shai was that ultimate love, was that ultimate sacrifice. So that's why I say I don't want to sound like I'm going off because Yahweh Shai did it, man. Yahweh Shai was the one that showed us what that true love is, man. He showed us how to, what a real sacrifice is, man. He literally sacrificed himself for us, man. That's why our service is just reasonable, you know? Because Yahweh Shah's uh, service was reasonable too. It says it, it it pleased the Lord to bruise him. But hey, man, how many how many people out here be like, hey, yo, you'll go through what Yahweh Shah went through? You couldn't, man. <laughs> you know? He's that ultimate sacrifice, man. He did something that no other man could. All right, let me jump over. This is Jonah 2 and 9. It says, But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that thou I vowed salvation is of the Lord. Okay? He says, I will sacrifice thee with the voice of thanksgiving. So when you uh, you're giving your voice, giving prayers, and giving praise to your Hawaii Shemi Al Shah. Even your intro saying, call the lawyer Hawaii Shemi Al Shah. That's giving a sacrifice to the Lord, man. The ability to give up the things that you knew before the truth. The ability that your your moms and your grandma and your pops been saying Jesus Christ your whole life. The ability to not call on that no more in faith. That takes a special spirit in order to do that, man. 
Okay. Um, I wanted to get. Oh, let me see if I can if I can find this. I said I was gonna get Matthew, but I wanted to see if I can uh find this Lord willing real quick because it was pretty on point. Uh, Salakia. Bear with me for one second. Khan, this is the song of the three holy children. Also, you can sometimes it'll say the prayer of Azariah. But uh, this is uh, the song of the three holy children, um, verse 17. Actually, I'm going to start at 16. It says, nevertheless, in a contrite heart and a humble spirit, let us be accepted. See, that's how we want to be accepted before Yahweh Bashem Yahushad. Okay. It says, um, like as in the burnt offerings of rams and bullocks, and like as in ten thousands of fat lambs, so let our sacrifice be in thy sight this day. And grant that we may wholly go after thee, for they shall not be confounded that put their trust in thee. So, hey, just like we had, he said, he says, uh, of rams and bullock, like as ten thousands of fat lambs. That's a lot of sacrifices, man. He says, so let our sacrifice be in thy sight this day, man. And grant that we may wholly go after thee. So when you're giving up all of those sacrifices, the Lord, you believe and you, tr you trust in the Lord. All right. And that's all of those rams are spiritual because now we're sending up these spiritual sacrifices of doing these lessons. Okay, these are all sacrifices that we're making to Yahweh Basham Yahushua now to pray He has mercy on us, man. Okay, and I want that's why I mentioned I say about women. You know, we don't y'all don't come out to the highways and byways, but hey, man, you can make sacrifices to the Lord, praying to the Lord, giving to the men of the Lord. All right, uh, uh, not. Following the law to the best of your ability, covering your head, not eating abominable foods, all right, not smoking, all of those things you can do to get closer to your Hawabashim Yahushai, man. All right, so everybody got their lot, everybody got their portion, but it's not an easy thing to get at, and that's why you know I got the thing say all or nothing. The, and I'm gonna get revelation too before I, before I wrap this up because I, I gotta get that. Uh, verse 18 it says, And now we follow thee with all our heart, we fear thee and seek thy face you see that so how do we follow after the most high with all of our minds man it said because we fear thee and we seek his face all right we fear yahweh we seek the face which means we we get closer to the scriptures we get closer to the word and that's how we seek the face of the lord okay let me get matthew now because that's that's the that's the main one uh that we go based off of for this uh topic this is matthew 10 and uh, I'm going to start at 37 because I read while I was looking for a photo for this, I was typing in like sacrifice pictures and stuff like that. And um, one that came up, it says three things that you aren't supposed to sacrifice. It says um, your family, your heart and your dignity. Those were the thing, things that I said don't sacrifice, which isn't true. All right. The scripture here is about to tell you, you got to we willing to sacrifice your family. And I don't mean obviously putting them on, on a, a damn altar. You know, even though Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac, you know, which is spiritual, okay? But you got to be willing to sacrifice your family, meaning that if your whole family, like, hey, your woman and your kids, like, hey, we want to take this chip, pops, Abba, take this chip with us, you got to say, no, I'm not doing that. Y'all not supposed, don't do it in the first place, but if they go and do it, hey, let them go. Let them do their thing, and you don't take it, okay? You got to be willing to make that sacrifice, okay? But, um... Uh, it says, uh, oh, in the next one, it says your heart, which means your mind. We got to sacrifice our mind, too, because our mind is now given to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. It says, love the Lord thy, uh, with all that heart, thy might, thy strength, okay? And thy soul, you love the Lord, man. So you are supposed to sacrifice your mind over into the Lord. And uh, it says your last one was your dignity, all right? The thing is, you don't have to sacrifice your dignity because dignity goes along with integrity. And the Lord wants us to keep that intact. In fact, he builds on our, in our dignity. He builds on our integrity to make that stronger and better. So that's something that he wouldn't actually uh, sacrifice. That's something that he's willing to make stronger and better. All right, but Matthew 10 and 37. He that loveth father more than more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So if you ain't willing to sacrifice your, uh, your family for the Lord, you ain't worthy of his, his greatness and his glory, man. It says, and he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. So you got to be willing to sacrifice and follow after the Lord. The Lord lifted that cross and carried his burdens. 
all right, and did what he had to do. He's he's requiring the same thing of us. It says he, and this is the point: he that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it, man. So, when you to in order to find life, you got to lose this life in order to to uh, give up. It says, uh, he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. So when you sacrifice this life, all or nothing, you're gonna be given the all for uh for giving it all up on this side, man. Okay, and I want to, you know, um, we always talk about the different Gospels and how they say similar things, but a little bit different. This is one that I, I had to get the different versions in the Gospel, man. Uh, this is Mark 8 and 35, because they say similar things, but they still are all spiritual. It says, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the Gospels, the shame shall save it. So it ain't just about, um, uh, you know, it's about Yahweh Shah, but it's also about the gospel too, man. The gospel is a part of it. So it says, he that loses his life for my sake and the gospel, all right? So you can't just say, hey, oh, I believe in Yahweh Shai, but you don't believe in the gospel. Because there are going to be many, he said, many shall come, uh, uh, false prophets shall come in my name. But they ain't about the gospel. They're not about the good news. They're not about the doctrine. Okay, and see, that's why the beauty is of hearing the different uh, uh, forms of the gospel, okay, from the different men of the Lord, from the saints. Okay, now let me get this last one. This is John 12, and verse 25. It says, he that, lose, he that loveth his life shall lose it. You see that? So what did I say? The thing that you love most, you're going to lose it. So he that loveth his life, you're going to lose it. The Lord will take it away from you, man. He says, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. So if you hate this life, you're going to keep, you gonna keep uh, your righteousness through the Lord through, for life eternal, man. All right? So if you love this life, you, you go, the Lord going he, he gonna to take, take that away from you too. All right? But we hate this life and we seeking life eternal, man. And that's the beauty of the scriptures. We got something that the world can't give us. Okay? It's a couple I want to get on uh, Yahweh Shai, but let me get these real quick. This is, uh, what is that? Syrac 35. This is Syrac 35 and verse 7. It says, um, ooh. Man. I'm going to start at 4. This is a good chapter. It says, thou shalt not appear empty before the Lord. See that? When you're making a sacrifice, you're not supposed to appear empty before the Lord. Uh, and, you know, that's when you have, like, certain ceremonies like Passover and things like that. You're, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to have wine and things like that. But still, you, you what, when Yahweh Shah comes, he's going to be like, hey, what, what, when, like that dude that commented on my thing that was just scoffing, the Lord's going to be like, hey, yo, you know, when he coming to visit, he's going to be like, hey, where are your works? You know, it says a man shall be saved by his works. He's going to be like, where are your works? And he came empty before the Lord, man. It says, for all these things are to be done. Because of the commandment. You see that? So we're supposed to sacrifice unto the Lord because of commandment, man. It says the offering of the righteous maketh the altar fat. So see that? We are, 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 the, like I just mentioned those 10,000 rams, man. The sacrifices of the righteous make the altar fat, man. All right? And the sweet savor there is is before the Most High. Because when you read Tobit 14 and 12, you know, Raphael said, uh, uh, that I am one of the uh, 12, the seven holy angels. And when the seven holy, holy angels are coming in and out before the presence of the Most High, man, who sacrifice, who give it the, uh, the prayers of the saints. Okay? It says, uh, the offering of the righteous maketh the altar fat, and the sweet savor there is before the Most High. The sacrifice of a just man is acceptable, and the memorial thereof shall never be forgotten, man. You see that? And so that's why the Lord says in Hebrews 6 and 10, he is not unfaithful to, uh, unrighteous to forget our labor of love, man. All right. He said the sacrifice of a just man is acceptable. So the, giving up this life, that's going to be accepted in the eyes of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh. He says it's going to be a memorial and it shall never be forgotten. The things that we do on this side, man, are going to be are recorded in the heavens, man. All right. And that's why we got to stay grateful uh, for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and the things that he's he's showing unto us, man. All right. Um, when I want Sirach 34 and 19, it says. Ooh, let me start at uh, 18. It says, He that sacrifices of a thing wrongfully gotten 
His offering is ridiculous, and the gifts of unjust men are not accepted. You see that? So they come and they try to say, hey, you know, this is for Jesus. This is in the name of Jesus. Hey, that's ridiculous, man. That's what the scriptures say. That's ridiculous, man. That's an idol God. It says uh, the un gifts of the unjust men are not accepted. Not accepting that, man. The Most High is not pleased with the offerings of the wicked. Neither is he pacified for sin by the multitude of the sacrifices. So just because you give a lot don't mean that the Lord is like hey, is, is accepting it, man. He ain't pleased with the offerings of the wicked, man. You can, you can donate uh, $10 million to a church that's praising Jesus Christ. He ain't, hey, that don't mean nothing to the Lord, man. He ain't accepting that. Okay? Uh, and this is, a, uh, this is a good one. A little random caught me off guard, but it's on point. This is Judith uh, chapter 16 and verse 16. It says, For all sacrifice is too little for a sweet savor unto thee, and all the fat is not sufficient for thy burning. But he that feareth the Lord is great at all times, man. All right? So it says, For all sacrifice too little for a sweet savor. At the end of the day, it says we can never go far enough, man. All right? So all the sacrifice that we, we can put up, all the sacrifice in the Lord is still not worthy of, of all that are true praise and uh, the things that the Lord uh, deserves. But nonetheless, it says, uh, the, the last part says, but he that feared the Lord is great at all times. You see that? So that's what we trying to achieve. That's what we're going for, to try to please the Lord, man. That's what all this is about, trying to please Yahweh Bashem Shai, man. Hoping that he have mercy on us, man. Because all the people that are found without mercy, hey, man, they're going to be in a bad, they're going to be in pitiful case. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 20. It says, For ye are bought with the price. Therefore glorify the Most High in your body and in your spirit, which are Yahweh's, man. You see that? So we were bought with a price. We got to glorify the Lord in our body. Of you being a spirit, walk in the spirit, man. All right? With our spirit, which are the Most High's. He, he owned, he just, he's the rightful owner of our bodies and spirits anyway. So we got to follow him, man. And we got to be willing to sacrifice this life for that because he brought us with a price. He took a he took a better hey Yahweh Bashem hey think about this Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai took a bet on you man he put a he placed a bet on you and said hey yo this one right here then he not gonna be plucked out of my hand this one right here he's gonna serve me man hey what what did he say about Job he said have that trial my servant Job you know he Job was bought with a price man he put his money on Job man <laughs> call on Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai man to to be held to that regard man is truly a beautiful thing. All right, so now let me get these last two, last three verses, because I, I said I wanted to, you know, I can't, I, I I would be remiss to do this lesson and not get any scriptures on our Lord and Savior. Um, about, you know, even though I got a couple earlier, but this is more specific about him. This is uh, Ephesians 5 and 2. It's, uh, let's start at 1. Be therefore followers of the Most High as dear children, and walk in love as Hamashiach also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to the Most High for a sweet-smelling savor. You see that? He was that ultimate sacrifice for our sins, man, and our wicked deeds, man. So we, how much more ourselves, man? How much more the things that we do, uh, we, we, we need to be trying to, f we're fighting for salvation that the Lord may uh, find this pleasing because Yahweh shall die for our sins, man. We got to pay that back <laughs> as much as we can. We got to pay that back, man. Okay. This is Hebrews 10 and 12. It says, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of the most high. You see that? Whoo. This man had an offering, offered one sacrifice for the sins forever, man. You know, so we ain't got to sacrifice rams and goats no more. We, we present our bodies now, and Yahweh Shah did it for us, man. Now he's up there with Yahweh. It says, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he had made, he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. That's how you know he's talking, he died for the elect, man. For one, that one offering of his life, he perfected forever for the, uh, for the elect. Okay. All right, now let me get it with this. This is the all or nothing. This is the all or nothing scripture, and I'm going to wrap it up with this one, Lord willing. This is uh, Revelation, the third chapter, and verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. 
So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, man. So the Lord said all or nothing, man. The Lord said either you with me or you against me. He said he that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad, man. Hey, who's on my who's on the Lord's side, man? Okay? So the Lord said he'll spew you out his mouth if you if you still hold on to this world, if this world is pacifying you, man. Ain't nothing left in this place but death and destruction. That's it, man. So you gotta have the you gotta pray to the Lord to have the ability to sacrifice this life, man, and to have a firm, steady foundation in Yahweh Shah. All right, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, or Chakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David the elect. Until next time, Lord willing, Shalom.